so I feel more comfortable um, with this protocol knowing that it has worked in the past. <laughs> for those that are new here um, as you can probably tell by the title of this video today I am going to be sharing with you my frozen embryo transfer calendar I can't believe I'm saying that <laughs> um, I just feel like the weeks have gone by so quickly and this day is quickly approaching um, so I do want to say um, to please keep in mind that every protocol is different and every doctor is different. Um, your protocol is tailored to you and to your needs, um, but I just want to share mine with you. If you are new here, um, Eric and I have been trying to conceive for two years with IVF due to male factor infertility, and this is going to be our fifth transfer. This will actually be our fourth time on this protocol. Um, the first two times we found success. Um, I miscarried twice though at nine weeks each. And then the third time I had a blightened ovum. And on the fourth time we decided to try a natural protocol um, which led to a negative. So we decided to switch back to this one and give it one more shot. Um, the only difference is that I am going to be on progesterone one extra day. So uh, with that being said, I'm just going to jump into my calendar and um, if you guys have any questions or if there's anything that I don't explain correctly, please comment down below and I'll try to answer your question. So um, this time I am going to be on birth control for 10 days. Um, the last two times, or actually the last three times, I don't believe I was on birth control. Um, the only reason I am going to be on birth control this time is due to scheduling purposes. I believe my clinic was trying to fit me in on a particular day and so for that reason I need to be on birth control. Um, on the 10th day I will stop birth control. After stopping pills I should expect a menstrual cycle and I'm actually just going to read what my calendar says. Expect menstrual cycle after stopping pills. Suppression check is optimally scheduled on day 1 to 3 of bleeding. However, if no bleeding by day 4 off the pills, please schedule ultrasound regardless. So basically what that means is that I should be getting a period after stopping the birth control and a suppression check is basically an appointment where they check to see if my lining is thin and if it is then I am to move on to the next step. So after my suppression check if everything looks good I am to begin oral estuaries three times a day. My calendar just has morning, noon, and evening. I asked my nurse if there was a particular time she wanted me to take them in the morning and in the evening, and she said there is not. So I am doing 6 a.m., noon, and 6 p.m., and that's a 2 milligram tablet, um, and I will be on that for... So I'll be on that for 16 days, and then after that... Um, I will have another ultrasound to see if the estrays have worked and if they have thickened my lining. If they have, I can move on to the next and almost final step, I guess you can say, um, and that is to begin progesterone. So I will be on endometrin vaginally and PIO injections. The endometrin vaginally will be twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. And then the PIO injection is a 50 milligram um, injection and I will just do that once in the evening. Um, and then I'll be on progesterone for six days and I'll also be continuing estrus in the meantime and then I'll have my frozen embryo transfer. So after my transfer, I go back nine days later to have my blood levels checked to see if I am pregnant. If I am, and then I return two days later to see if my beta levels have doubled, and if they have, then I get to have an ultrasound, I believe, at seven weeks. So it seems kind of soon, but um, I remember the first two times just being so excited and both times I was able to hear a heartbeat. So 
hopefully um, the protocol works for us and that extra day on progesterone does the trick. So um, it's kind of a lot to take in, but I feel like this protocol is very easy and um, pretty basic, I would say. When we did our natural protocol, it wasn't harder. It was just a lot more taxing on my body. Um, I was doing Gonal F injections in order to thicken my lining, so it was just harder than just taking an estrus pill to thicken my lining. So I'm really excited to be back on this protocol. Um, like I mentioned, we did find success with this twice, so I feel more comfortable um, with this protocol knowing that it has worked in the past. I will be on progesterone one extra day. I'm not sure why that is, but I did do some research and I believe the reason for that is because the amount of days that you are on progesterone needs to match the age of your embryo. So our embryo on the day of the transfer will be a six day embryo because we had to thaw it once previously in order to do PGD testing. And so on the day of the transfer, it will be a six day embryo. And so hopefully that extra day in progesterone does the trick and we have a successful transfer. Um, but that's going to be it for the calendar portion of this video. I also want to share with you what I am doing in order to thicken my lining. Um, so I read that red raspberry leaf tea is really good. So I actually have three different brands that I am taking. Um, and I just wanted to share those with you. The first one is by Earth Mama. Um, it's just, um, it just says 100% organic raspberry leaf tea. And so there's that one. I am also doing traditional medicines. Again, organic. Um, it says it helps support a healthy cycle. There's that one, and then I ordered this one off Amazon. Um, this one also has um, red raspberry leaf, but it also has chasberry and nettle, um, which it says it's especially chosen to support your fertility, health, reproductive system, and ability to conceive. And so it's this one right here. It's by Pink Stork. And so I'm not having all three. I'm just having one a day. And I kind of just rotate them. And something else that I am taking that I heard is really good to thicken the lining is pomegranate juice. Um, which I will also be continuing after transfer. Um, because I heard that it's really good for like a sticky embryo. So hopefully that helps. Lastly, I don't have them with me, but I'm also taking Brazilian nuts and then I am going to be purchasing bone broth. So um, I don't know if it has to specifically be chicken or beef. Um, I'm probably going to get one of each and then drink that. And then once we transfer, I will be adding pineapple core to my diet. But yeah, that's mainly it. Um, also... <laughs> Before I forget, I am also adding avocados to thicken my lining, and then I'm trying to eat as much protein as possible, but yeah, I think that's about it. That's um, kind of all I'm doing to prep for this transfer. Um, if you guys know of anything else that I should add, please comment that down below. Again, um, if there's anything that I didn't explain correctly or if you have more questions, please comment down below and I'll try to answer those for you. Um, but that's going to be it for this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.